All right. So uh, we're dealing with now a, um, a two eight and a half by eleven facing pages. We call them. Um, so naturally, um, we're just going to work on this panel here on the left. Um, this has bleed on it, so if I hit W, I can see that I have um, an extra area around the outer perimeter, which is called the bleed. So where you see this white part here, that's my page, and then you see this red line around it, and that's my bleed. Uh, yeah, so the bleed is uh, 0.125, and so that's an eighth of an inch uh, in decimals. Um, uh, so the reason why I'm telling you that is because um, there are a couple things. If you want ink to run off the page, the print the printer is not going to like print directly to the edge of the paper. It prints over the edge of the paper, and then the paper is trimmed um, to that size. So what bleed does is really just gives you an extra space to make that ink bleed off the page, and then when it's tr when the book is trimmed at the press. Um, it's going to basically give the illusion that the ink is going off the paper, which it really is. Um, that's just how they produce it. Um, so anything that has color or ink that runs off the page needs bleed, and the standard bleed um, area is always an eighth of an inch. Um, so you can see that the ink is running off of um, three sides of this panel, the black ink, but in the center of the spread, um, uh, here it just goes straight to white so um, what we, we do in that case is just basically put um, uh, design a graphic to fill this background that um, has an eighth of an inch bleed on all sides all four sides and then when we place it in InDesign just crop in that eighth of an inch bleed over so it doesn't um, uh, blend into this opposite page so eight and a half by eleven um, with eighth of inch, inch bleeds all the way around is a canvas size of um, eight and three quarters by eleven point two five or eleven and one quarter. So in Photoshop, I'm just going to um, open a new file, make my resolution at three hundred, and then build it out in my width and height to those measurements. So. Eight and a quarter would be, uh, I'm sorry, eight and a half, 8.75 is eight and three quarters. So again, we want an eighth of an inch on one side, eighth of an inch on the other, equaling a quarter of an inch added to the eight and a half width of the page. So it's 8.75, 11.25 for the height. And 11. Um, color mode, I'm just gonna do CMYK. Background, um, it's okay to keep it white for now. And just okay that. So here's your canvas. And, and basically, if you build your um, design on this canvas, you're safe to go. You can just place it right in there. Um, you're going to have enough bleeds, and you'll be good to go. So I'm just going to right away save this canvas um, just in my links folder, just kind of floating out here. I'll call it football page. And then I'm going to look at some of the assets that I put together to build with. Um, so I have this composition folder. And actually, I have all of my elements on the Moodle. I didn't mention um, right here. So on the Moodle for week of. Uh, uh, the 17th through the 23rd, I have this image uh, composition assets folder. And if you click on this um, and you can sign in, I'll have to sign in real quick to show you what it would look like for you. Uh, oh. There we go. So once you'd sign in, you'd be able to see all these assets if you wanted to um, download them um, and follow along. I would probably download yeah, any of them, really. Um, but I'm going to 
um, have this video so you can kind of see it if you wanted to download it later on. Um, but basically one of the assets I have is like a drawing, um, just basically a scan of my uh, sketchbook, a couple of uh, pictures that I wanted to use in my design. I found this picture of smoke which I thought would be really um, uh, fun to start photoshopping that in. Um, so I'm just going to uh, drag some of these images into Photoshop and what I want to do is just use these kind of uh, drawings in my like spread let's say and actually I'm going to bring this one to and actually from the Moodle if I wanted to bring that I could just double click it and download it onto my machine and I'll drag that into Photoshop too. So you can tell like these were actually just taken with my cell phone so they're not really the greatest pictures but really what I want to do is just unlock this layer by double clicking background. Um, I don't really have to name it but um, you can tell it's really yellow. This is actually drawn on like white paper um, but the photo was so bad and the lighting was really bad that um, it's just got this bad yellow tinge to it. So the first thing I want to do if I want to take this and kind of isolate the line art from the background um, is just um, adjust the levels. So basically increasing the, um, the brights and then increasing the contrast between the brights and the darks. So I'm going to move my slider here a little bit um, to kind of make this as contrast it as possible. I hit OK. I'm actually going to go into mode and change it to grayscale. And then at this point I can kind of just you can kind of separate it in a couple different ways. I mean I can go into channels um, and now that I'm in gray uh, scale mode in channels here I can have see my gray um, channels selected and then I can just uh, choose this load channel as selection um, icon down here. And then it's just going to select everything that's um, um, either, well, actually white in this case. So if I go to um, select in inverse, it's going to select the opposite of the white, which being the black. Um, and then under layers, I can actually fill this area that I have selected with um, any color I want. But what I'm going to do is I'll fill it with red so you can kind of like see um, it. Actually, it's in uh, it's still in grayscale mode. So if I go to image mode with my uh, selection still there, and then uh, I hit CMYK, so now I'm going to actually be able to fill it with uh, red instead of just like a gray tone. So there's one way of doing it. You can kind of then after that, take your lasso tool. It's set for the magnetic lasso now. And then select what you want. Um, it's not the cleanest way to do it um, because you're going to still have some of this, uh, uh, just some of this coloration in the background. It's kind of like it's not perfectly white. Um, so I'm just going to go back a few steps. I'm actually going to. Um, bring this into uh, Illustrator. Uh, so since it's line art, it's a pretty good candidate for Illustrator to just bring in, um, uh, trace it with the Live Trace tool, um, delete all of the uh, background content, um, the white content, make it transparent, and just, just drag it in and resize it without losing any uh, quality in Photoshop. So I'm not really concerned as to how big it is in Illustrator because um, uh, because I can just scale it up. What I really want to be probably concerned with is the the shape of like the artwork itself. So this is probably one of the easier ways to um, work with line art um, is just drag it in, um, image trace in Illustrator. Uh, just hit OK. 
So it traces it pretty decently. Um, you can probably know this from your other classes, but your, your presets, you can switch it. Um, usually I like to select black and white logo because it keeps everything kind of similar to what I intended. It makes the lines a little bit cleaner. Um, and then once it's once you kind of are happy with your tracing result in this at this point, um, you can just hit expand, and then this is going to just trace everything out um, in points and paths. And then to separate really everything at this point, um, I'm just going to hit the magic wand tool in Illustrator, um, and then hover over the white section, um, and it's really just going to select all of the um, pieces that have this property here, which is just the white fill and then the no stroke um, uh, property. And then you can just simply press delete and it'll delete everything with that property and what you're left with is everything um, with a black stroke um, only. So just black shapes um, shaped out. I can just drag in um, with my direct selection tool in Illustrator delete all those parts that I don't really want, this extra drawing stuff, and then just keep what I kind of want. Um, this image, I actually just drew the Nike logo here, and it's just kind of a placeholder, so I'm just going to um, delete that too, because I actually want to put the actual logo there so it's sharper and not just a rough sketch. Um, and then I guess I really don't need this piece anymore, so I can just select not not to save it um, and then go back to um, uh, my page um, just copy paste um, paste it as a smart object uh, so what the smart object is going to let you do is um, paste it as a raster file so it basically it's going to name it the specter smart object layer um, it's going to have a bounding box around it with the X in the middle um, and this just means that it's uh, a file that's about to be placed that is vector in nature. Um, so if you hit return, you're, it's going to it's going to do something. Oh, it's going to place it in there. And uh, I still have it as a vector smart object. So what you can do with a vector smart object is really just double click it here in the um, layers palette. And then if you wanted to go back and make any changes to it, you could. So I'm going to close this Illustrator file. And I'm just going to change it to red. So do that red color change that I did before, but just via Illustrator this time. Let's see. So I just double clicked there, this thumbnail. And then it automatically opened the file in Illustrator. It gave it this really crazy name up top here, but that's not really that important because this vector file is embedded within Photoshop now. So I just did a Command A to select all of this shape. And then over here on my palette in Illustrator, I can change the color like I would any other kind of piece of vector art. Well, you know what? It's not. My color mode is off. So I kind of selected this whole thing and I can just pick a color um, in Illustrator and just sort of change the color there. And then so once you do something like that and you just kind of file save it, it's not going to like save a file like it normally would. It's actually just going to save over um, this state here. And then so it'll just automatically update it, very much like an InDesign where you would like update a photo or something. You can kind of do the same between Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, and I don't really, what's interesting though and what's a little bit different is I don't have to keep track of this Illustrator file at all. I can just close it out after I make my change, go back to Photoshop and see that it's a vector object. And if I wanted to make a change again, I can just double click and up, open it back up again. And then uh, you know make it make whatever change I want in there too. So kind of similar to InDesign, but not exactly.
Same concept though. So for like a really um, like, um, let me think here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate this so it's uh, straight. So if I go to image, I'm in Photoshop again. Uh, image, image rotation, um, and I can rotate this 180 degrees. And then for this piece, um, you know, again, this photo is really bad. It's got a lot of like terrible um, uh, erase marks and everything. Um, so what I'll do is then kind of grayscale it again, and then go up to image adjustments and levels. And then again, I'm just going to increase the darks, but then increase the whites a lot so I can really get close without damaging too much of this. And then again, once my gray is uh, channel is selected here, I can load the channel as selection. Um, Command Shift I, make a new layer and fill it with um, uh, fill it with like a black. So then I can get it on a transparent background. Deselect and then hide this original layer. I'll just delete it all together. And then, you know what, I'll add another layer in the background and then um, give it a fill. And I'll give it a fill of uh, just something bright so I can see like kind of how everything is. Oh, you know what, I keep forgetting. I actually will need to change my image mode uh, to CMYK. When it asks you to merge layers, typically when you're doing like a uh, color mode change, I'll always, uh, I won't merge the layers because um, that'll just flatten your image and it'll kind of limit you from being able to work with it. I mean, basically it started as a flat image and the whole point of me doing this is to layer it out. So um, I'll go ahead again and fill. I wanted, I wanted to fill my background with a brighter color so I can see. Um, the pixel or the color is easier so I can select what I wanted to. Here just take the lasso tool and just go around this face here. And this piece is kind of dirty so I'm going to hold off on that but I'll drag this part over. Make sure that my top layer is selected. I don't really want to take any of the yellow stuff. Bring this over. I can kind of drag it over to this uh, uh, tab there, drop it in. So this has more of like a, um, a pencil and pen look. I can make this kind of faded back in the background or, or whatnot. Um, piece I'll just rotate. And this guy would just probably, uh, would just probably like, you could even even erase like some of this stuff, just simply with your eraser here if you wanted to. You know, just kind of clean that up so I can lasso around that a little bit easier. Get rid of this. And just to make it easier to grab it. So I can just kind of mix and match or, and, uh, you know, different things or whatnot if I wanted to. Um, this, that, that'll be a little bit, uh, that other image would be a little bit more difficult to work with but you know so now that this this little piece up here is um, you know isolated I can just command a and then hit a nudge the nudge button up or down left right arrows um, to actually um, trace the selection out and then you can do kind of you can put fills on it you can put um, uh, you, I can, you can add like textures to it uh, let me see just do like a, all kinds of that stuff. So whatever you wanted to do, you could just kind of 
just play with it, you know. Um, another piece I wanted to put in my composition is this uh, uh, Chicago skyline. So this this has um, a little bit uh, closer, more blues, and just different colors. It's not as it's not as black and white, literally, as the other uh, photo. Um, so in order to kind of isolate something like this, you know, I um, uh, you could actually you could just uh, go up to image mode. I'll grayscale it, and I think let me go ahead and adjust the levels again and give the buildings more contrast like that that's probably too much there we go and so what I would probably do for this is uh, I just want to take the buildings out um, so I will actually then load the channel again um, and then reverse my selection and then I could just probably grab this and drag it all over into my composition I could see oh yeah you know what I better go back and delete the layer because I need to delete um, the white so I'm going to inverse again and then just delete, deselect. Let me see if my if that works as expected by making a new layer and filling it uh, with the color just to break it out. Oh, it's in gray, so I better go back to that CMYK uh, fill. Uh, just the color. So it doesn't look like I deleted it, so I'm going to try that again. Low channel. There we go. Alright, that worked. And again, yep, I met. Uh, it's a little bit small, so I'm just going to image, um, go to image and size. And it says it's 22 inches wide, but in actuality, my other file is 300 dpi. This file is 72 dpi, meaning that the other file is actually three times larger than this file, um, approximately. So, actually, yeah, pretty much. Um, so, in order to get like the right sizing relationship together, I have to make this 300. And so when this image is 300, then uh, 300 DPI, then it's actually going to render at almost seven inches. So that's why it's a little bit shorter on the um, 8.75 wide canvas. Um, so once I make that change, I can understand that. And then I can, um, really go in here and uh, make that size adjustment to 8.75 so it can fit uh, perfectly in there. I'll adjust this um, enlargement. Actually, I'll uncheck resample. 8.75, okay. And uh, make it 300. So it's going to increase the size of it to 8.75 inches wide, so it'll reach across my bleed, and I can just drag it over, and that'll that'll fit pretty good in there. I'll keep this up here. Actually, okay. So you all have already um, uh, probably 
isolated out your shoes um, for your magazine. Uh, so what I want to do in this composition is kind of the same thing. Um, this will be really probably quick because the shoe is uh, pretty straightforward as far as the contrast between it and the background. So I'm really simply just going to um, take my wand tool, go over this white area, select it. I'm going to hold the shift key so my little plus sign on my um, magic wand is uh, showing. Um, toggling on and off and I can toggle it on to select or add to my selection all of this content here and then just kind of delete that background out of it. Some of the shoes as I was tracing them I realized that uh, they would be a little bit more difficult to um, break out this shadow piece. Um, so if I wanted to I, uh, take this uh, shoe off I'd probably go with this uh, uh, magnetic lasso tool um, just to let Photoshop kind of find the edges a little bit easier um, and because what I want to do is really separate this shadow piece from the shoe piece and it doesn't seem like it's going to be very perfect on some of the parts um, but that's not the end of the world because I can just go back and um, refine that selection a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of rough it in here to get as much as I can without working too hard. So I close that loop and um, I'm going to go down here and uh, open up this um, mask preview area. So the way I have this selected now is um, everything that is red is unselected. Everything that is kind of clear like this is selected. Um, so if I press B to go into my brush tool and I kind of brush in what I want additionally selected um, or actually brush in what I want deselected then I can either reverse the selection and refine it a little bit more to get rid of that shadow piece. Again, without taking up too much time, it does still take time though. And I'll just delete that piece. And I'm not sure what size this is, so I'm gonna go and check. Yeah, so this is gonna be a bit small too. Um, if I bring this to 300 dpi unselect resample it's actually going to be three and a half actually almost four inches um, in high res on this page so what I then want to do is set it for 300 and go up to image size again um, bring it up to a size that I want it to be probably like twice the size you can see when I, well, that's not really twice the size. Twice would be like seven and a half or something. So about seven and a half inches. Um, it brings resolution down to 150 dpi, which is still small, but I'll hit OK and visit the image size menu again, hit my resample button, and then click 300. And we should probably be good to go. As I was going through the catalog too, I was looking at like um, the shoe photography, and of course it's amazing. But um, I just there's I you just have sometimes you just build habits of like tweaking color um, a little bit here and there, just nudging things. So I like to have a lot of contrast in my stuff. So darker darks, uh, brighter uh, brights. Um, so this is a good opportunity to do stuff like that. Um, even in the, uh, and I'll, I'll mess with that later too. But again, I'll just drag this over into my composition. 
this is kind of it could be could be larger so I'm gonna go back and actually make it larger I'll give it another like I'll just be generous and give it like 10 more or 10 inches total and a little bit smaller so something like that again if I wanted to take my smart object I can resize this to any kind of size without losing quality because it really is not um, it's not vector it's not vector art so or it's, I'm sorry it's not raster art it is vector art so you can make it as, as huge as you want without losing quality. Uh, what's nice, maybe a, you, you know, maybe um, you want to duplicate it really quick. You can do that too. Um, whatever. Yeah, maybe that was okay. Uh, so play around with that. Um, what else? One other. So one other piece of this that I need to do is. Um, bring some type in there. Actually I wanted to bring some smoke in there too. So I have this smoke image um, and I'm really just going to do the same I don't know what that was. Um, I'm just going to bring it in, unlock it, go to image size, look how big it is. Uh, it's pretty large. Uh, I'll just drag it in and see like visually how large it is. I don't think it hurt to make it larger. Um, I'll get rid of this because I don't really need that. Don't need this. Don't need that. Probably, let's just say twice the size. He's got enough there. All right. So, again, it's two color. I can go to channels, load the selection. Um, the white piece is what I want. Uh, so the next step would just be to go to CMYK make a new layer and then fill it and then this is kind of probably where I want to do like the red color and then I can turn this layer off and I can see that um, the, just the smoke is selected which is which is good I'm just gonna drag it over now probably would like to make the smoke more red because I wanted to kind of match the the Nike check so I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller I'm just gonna put it over here in the corner and I have some of these line drawing over um, behind it I'm gonna put it behind that line drawing so it can just be kind of like a background piece as I look at this bottom section um, you know maybe I want this um, cityscape to be more vibrant or more have more saturation to it um, so I can actually just duplicate this layer So just put one on top of the other and see if that helps. It kind of filled it in a little bit. I'll try it again. So some of the transparent pixels are, are um, just overlapping each other, making it a little bit darker. Um, I can select all three of these if I don't want to manage three layers. I can just manage one. I can select them all and just merge the layers together. So now I just have one. Um, piece. 
Um, this smoke stuff, I want to kind of color match, and I don't know how bad it is on the screen as far as not being color matched. Um, but you can kind of easily do this by selecting that smoke layer, um, go to image adjustments and selective color. And so in selective color, I can choose, again, these different colors um, or color tones. And so I'll choose red and then um, with my slider, I'll add a little more um, magenta to the red, maybe like some, oh, it's not really. Um, well, it's actually supposed to be applying to the red smoke, but it's not really doing that very well. So what I'm going to do instead is probably just, I'm probably going to do a, uh, let's see. I'm going to select all on this smoke layer, and then I'm going to just nudge it to the side and then nudge it back to where I wanted it originally. And it's going to select all of the actual like active pixels on that layer. And I'm actually just going to edit fill. I'm just going to fill it with like a new color, just in like a more closer red color. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit just to make it. All right, so let's see. Well, that made it kind of lighter, uh, or actually darker. Um, and it, try fill it again. Uh, let me go up here. Yeah, it's still kind of orangey. It's okay, I'm gonna duplicate this. Oh, there we go. So I duplicated the red a little bit and it made it kind of like that. That's the difference. Uh, so what I want to do is then I'm just going to make the opacity on the top layer a little bit less. I'm just going to give it a couple clicks down just to fill it in a little bit less, a little bit more. That's good. So it's kind of nice and saturated red. I feel like that's a little bit closer to the check mark, just a tiny bit. I don't want to agonize over it, but I think that's probably close enough. So again, just to merge those layers so I don't have to um, manage that anymore. Um, and then, then what I really need to do is actually put I'm going to nudge this up a little bit. I need to put um, text on here. So I'm adding this extra area down at the bottom um, just to make some more room because I know I have a bleed down there and I need to put text. So I'm going to drag a little bit of this building layer. I just kind of option clicked and dragged it. Um, to duplicate that layer so I can get some of this water stuff. Uh, so then what I need to do then is the layer that I duplicated, I need to erase uh, some of the top. So I'm going to hit E and get my eraser tool out, make sure it's 100% and just start wiping over it, get rid of all that. And then just so I can see the water. Because of what I want to do then is, I'll duplicate that again. <clears throat> Nudge it up. So for this area then, I will uh, use my text tool and then just drag it over and then type in my copy, so football. Uh, I'm going to make this text white. I'm using this uh, serpentine font. I think it's this one. Um, it's all caps. I think. Um, so on Photoshop, you can do. Uh, 
I guess you can work with type. It's it's not as it's not as great as in InDesign, but you can do some things that you can't do in InDesign in it. Um, uh, so let's see. Where's my type? So up here, I can hit this little uh, folder tab, and it's going to pull out my uh, character and paragraph um, options for uh, uh, for Photoshop. So for some reason, this defaulted to have like a negative 80 um, uh, tracking property, um, probably from something else that I was working on. Um, so I'm going to bring this down to zero in this uh, character palette again to get to this menu. Um, I I'm not seeing it here and like where you would typically find it. Um, I guess you would just click on character or paragraph here. Um, but you can also, once you have the type tool selected, um, hit this little um, folder icon up here and then this will bring up your you know menu that you're used to seeing um, in in these in this software. So I'm just gonna um, you know make this larger, fill the fill the space. Um, Looks okay, I'll nudge it down a little bit. In my layers, I've deselected my my um, my type layer, so I can just, um, in my palette here, my type layer is going to look like this. It's got the T, and I can just double click it again and, and uh, make some adjustments to the type. If you lose your type layer, that's a good way to find it. Something like that. Um, I'll keep that there for now. Um, the only other piece I wanted to bring into the composition is uh, this Nike logo. And very simply, I'm just dragging it and dropping it in from Illustrator. Um, or I could just really just copy and paste it. It would be easier than, than that. I'll paste it as a smart object because it doesn't hurt to have it that way. And I kind of wanted to put it like this. It's not exactly straight, so I'm going to have to go to uh, this little piece on the illustration and just uh, hit Command T so I can transform, meaning I could just kind of rotate it and then move it around a little bit without. Um, too much effort. I'll make it smaller because it's tighter to the logo. And let's see. So for the type, then um, you can apply just different styles to this. So um, let's see. I can go to um, down here. There's the effects palette. So I can drag. Uh, use this drop down menu and select um, any of these types of styles. And then, so in this layer style palette um, for this type, um, you can go through and you know drop shadow, all this other stuff. Um, but what I really wanted to do was do like a bevel emboss and to see how that would look. You can add texture, of course. Here you can scale up and down your texture. I don't really like the way that looks. You can adjust the depth so it really fades it out to make it look shallower or deeper as far as um, the texture type. Um, you can select your texture pattern here. I mean, that could work for football um, to something like that. Um, but what I really wanted to do was just kind of do like a simple, um, uh, like a bevel, a simple bevel and emboss treatment. Um, so in my bevel and emboss menu, um, you can pick the style, um, outer, inner, um, uh, you can make it soft edged, hard edged. I wanted to keep it hard edged on this one. Um, select the direction you want it. I uh, don't want it softened because I want this to be kind of more like solid looking. Um, your opacity for your shadow, you can um, adjust that. Um, your color as well. 
Um, so say if I wanted to go with red, you know, I'll just click on this little swatch and select that color that I wanted to. I don't really want that because I like, I seem to lean to more towards like monochromatic stuff. Um, you can change the angle of the shadow. So if you wanted to tweak this a little bit, you can kind of drag this around, change the direction of where this uh, light source is coming from uh, to create that bevel look. And you know when you're happy with it, just okay. You can uh, always go back in and make the change again um, by really just clicking, double clicking on this effects icon. So this icon will come up when you have an effect applied to a, a, a layer. Um, so if I needed to go back and then um, kind of make the opacity like a little bit lighter, preview on and off to see what happened there with that change. I can do that, make some subtle tweaks to it. Um, so if you were okay with that, this has got a lot of layers to it, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to take these three because these are the this is the water and the city layers, and I'm just going to merge them together. I think I'm going to bring this one out a little bit to fill in some of this space because this composition really lost hope on white space at this point. <laughs> this. Uh, this little smoke thing, I'll try and salvage what little white space I can and kind of nudge it over maybe a tiny bit. Actually, I don't know about that. There we go. Um, these little guys, I'm not going to deal with them right now, but that should be that should be okay. So I'm so what you would do after you're done with your uh, composition would be just save it. Um, I'm just saving over the original file that I saved earlier. Um, you can resave all your other elements if you want to reuse them, of course. Sometimes that'll make it easier to just reuse stuff. And then back in your um, InDesign file, let me just find it here. Um, Grab, go to File and Place, navigate to your your composition image. Now, if you remember, now so this is exactly like the right size to fit my bleeds and everything. So if I'm gonna fit it to the bleeds, I lined up everything, and it pretty much snaps and in design into place, which is good. Um, but I have this extra like bleed here uh, for the you know, for the folded over piece of it. So you can just kind of crop this in because you don't want this printing on your opposite screen. Unless you want it to bleed in, like you know, like if you wanted it to go in like that, just throw it in the back and you know do that. Whatever you want. You you're not limited to this this size panel but this is just what I'm doing just for demonstration purposes. If that's, like, let's say that's the size that I wanted, that's what it would be. So um, I'm not, not limiting you to any, anything really. So um, it's, just, it's just all about what you want to do. <coughs> Are there any questions or on that? I'm not saying this is really any good either. I'm just saying this is just a combination of stuff. I, I know you guys can do like way better stuff. So, <laughs> what's that? Yep, I did. <laughs>